Snooper Thursday! Woo! That's it. That's all we got for you today. <laughs> Bye. I'm tired. <laughs> this is the fastest show ever. <laughs> exactly. I'm kind of tired. Well, myself. Matt's obviously phoning it in because he didn't even comb his hair. So. You went there. <laughs> oh. uh, John and I just got back from the brewery barrel party, so we've been drinking b tons of barrel well, beers. Well, while we're on that subject, <laughs> like the brewery bought a new warehouse for all oh, the yeah. barrels. It's called Quercus Maximus. Yeah. Oh my John, god. John pretty much just walked around the room the entire night with a boner. Yeah, so mouth agape, and that wasn't because of Tyler this time. Well, he was, you know, in the back of my mind. You know. <laughs> we were in rare form on this show. Yes, we, we are already. <laughs> so tonight we are traveling to Belgium, but not really because we're in the studio. We're, we're, we're traveling, traveling in our minds and glasses. Exactly. Yes. So everybody, close your eyes. Think about your happy place in Belgium. Mm. Our happy place tonight is the Dupont or the Brasserie Dupont. Oh. Yeah, I was not allowed to say the. DuPont Brewery, because... Yeah, you can say because, DuPont, because you say DuPont Brewing Company. Well, that's because... Like Stone or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. It's, it's like the name of a brewery and blank brewing company. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's West Lateran Brewing Company. That you know sounds I mean? weird, though. <laughs> yeah, you know it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. But anyway... Because um, you say the name wrong, too. In our continuing efforts, we, we always make these efforts, and you then we slide back down into... You didn't the, catch that, by the way. It's okay. Just let it go. What? Did um, you catch that? Did you really? Um, I'll oh. catch it on the show. Whatever. Um, anyway, I just got dissed. In our continuing effort to make our shows more accessible to people throughout the world, um, we wanted to visit a couple of other countries occasionally, and so we're doing Belgium uh, this month in particular because uh, Untapped, our friends at Untapped, are having a uh, sponsorship with uh, Van Bergen de Wolf, which is a uh, importer of Belgian beers. This um, one too. Yes, and so if you check into this particular beer, you'll get a badge for the Belgian holiday badge. Yay. Um, and you'll also get an entry code to win a free trip for two to Belgium. So it makes it worth worthwhile, even I more worthwhile to drink these beers. The way it was explained, you get the entry code and then you go, you're redirected yeah. to another site where you enter that code and then it's official. I just did it just because I wanted to see the process before we, I checked into this beer. I haven't started drinking it yet. And we're going to win, so... Yeah. Preemptive checking in, dude. What's wrong with you? I know, I'm a loser. God. But um, thankfully, the, the untapped code is only like 45 digits long, so... Oh, that's, that's it. Yeah, Cut and good. paste. Yeah. Cut and cool. paste. Um, so yeah, but it's a, it's a really cool thing that they're doing. Um, it's for the 30th year anniversary of Van Berg, or Van Berg and DeWolf's 30 business. years, huh? 30 years. Wow. And uh, two days, or what day is it? It's the 19th today? Yep. yep. I never know what that is. Uh, really, a few days ago, not, not on the 15th of November, let's do that. <laughs> the 15th of November, they did the Coast to Coast toast. Coast to Coast toast. It was coast like toast. 3 p.m. Eastern time. You toasted a Belgian beer to them, so it was pretty cool. Anyway, let's open this, because this is an amazing beer. Um, this is our I'm cohort, not, Dr. Bill's, one of his favorite beers. I am going to point out also, I love this yellow Yeah, thing. it's like the green and yellow thing. Yeah, oh. they, they actually have like green cages, too, mm -hmm. which is it pretty looks, red. This, like... This bottle is so visually appealing aside from, okay, I know green glass aside from the is green kind glass, of a yeah. faux pas, but the green glass really is like, you, you see this bottle and you know it stays on DuPont. You know? you know what, and I'm sorry, Belgian breweries are the only ones that can get away with the green glass anymore. Like, they're the only ones I give a pass to. Like, I won't be like, ugh, what are you doing? Well, yeah, and it's English, also, it's England like that. England breweries, stop doing clearing green bottles, please. Well, it's also that whole, um, you know, like champagne split style yeah. thing, you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm okay with green. This is, um, of course, we're a little off season for saisons because we're going into winter time, but um, hey, this is a beer. Season. 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 Uh, well, yeah, that's your viewpoint season. on saisons because you're. I love them. Because they're you want to become the new saison man. I do. Um, but I mean, this is. Oh, that's this the is... title you're going after, the new saison man. <laughs> no, but there actually is already a. There already is a saison man, and I think he would. Beat the crap out of There's me. There's really a Saison man? There is, yeah. yeah. He's, I can't remember his name. Jason but he's, Hester. Um, Jason Hester. From uh, Trinity. Trinity Burn. Uh, he's cool. He's his like, name is the Saison man. Yeah, no, it's I actually feel funny. Like an asshole. No, the, be the, best, the best thing is, like, I, um, I was on um, Twitter or Facebook or something like that, and it was like, you know, we suggest you follow this person. And I was like, dude, in a patchwork blazer with a giant beard named Saison man. We're buddies. <laughs> <laughs> You're my guy. You yeah. yeah, I can see. I that. We're Skype friends. We talk nice. on Skype occasionally, Rad. but uh, yeah, he's. You remember JBF uh, when we sat in? Um, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, he, he was wearing the bandana. He's, yeah, he's got the dreads. He's one of those he's dudes. Easy to pick like, out of a crowd. He, he looks a lot like uh, Eric Selzar. 
Like he if Eric Salazar had me. dreads, yeah. 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 He had totally. the whole Eric vibe. So that was a tangent. Or maybe maybe yeah. Eric has his vibe. I don't know. Yeah. So if you're in, if you're in Colorado, tangent. check out Trinity. Awesome. Um, so anyway, like I was saying, Saisons are very versatile. This one is extremely versatile. You can pair this with just about anything. And this and is a, good. a beer a lot of, you know, I wouldn't say a lot of home brewers. It's like a, I guess a beer, when you're making a Saison, you know, it's a really, it's like a popular yeast to use also. Yeah. Like it's been. Mm -hmm. it's they, yeah, they propagate replicated. from uh, Saison a lot. Yeah. Home well, brewers. And it's funny because like the You've thing about. You've done that, haven't you? Um, on yeast, haven't you? Um, I haven't propagated from um, Dupont specifically. Um, I did uh, yeast from Blaugé, who's another like one of my favorite saison producers. But it's kind of crazy because like you know with a farmhouse style, um, it's it's very like kind of wild and slapdash. Where like their yeast, like if you buy you know the yeast from White Labs it's not necessarily going to be the same yeast that you would if you propagated just out of this bottle because I think there are like three or four different strains in here. So um, like the White Labs has two different Saison strains, Saison 1, Saison 2, and they're both from Saison DuPont. So it's just, it's really interesting, like the complexity that you get out of this beer, which is really simple. I think there are like four ingredients in this beer. You know, it's like Pilsner malt, um, I don't know what kind of hops they use, water, and then their yeast, and you just get so much complexity out of it. I mean, you get like pepper, you get it's like this. super clean. Yeah, you, know? you get this fruitiness, and it's just super we bright should, and dry, and it's awesome. The, the we nose. should cheers. Oh, oh me. yes, we should. <laughs> well, thanks for uh, wrecking my audio, Steve. Thank Sorry. you. I'm the reason <laughs> that we get <laughs> negative results on the gain because I scream randomly. <laughs> so. so, anyways. So, anyways. So. Oh. You guys suck. This is a great beer, though, and this is this is one of my favorite saisons, and it's been one of my favorites for many years. So. This, this is like the penultimate saison. I mean, if, if you ever think of saison, this is the place to start. You know, very easy drinking, light and yeah. crisp. You know, light and crisp. got a little bit of funk on it. But uh, one thing we haven't done in a long time is gone and visit Dr. Bill. Yeah, and it's been cool. sad. Yeah, it's been sad. We have a we we have like that weird thing after GABF where we have all those remote shows from Colorado, and then we kind of. We kind of roll into a time where we're like, let's go shoot here and let's go shoot there. And so traditionally, it seems like every time we get done with GABF, we kind of skip master pairings for a little while. So we're bringing it back this week. So Hooray. go see Dr. Bill. Boom. Hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairings with me, your host, Bill Sysak, known as Dr. Bill in the craft beer community for the last 30 years, and the sane one in the New Brew Thursday crew, John. I do have an attitude though. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so today, I have some beautiful seared ahi. That looks really good. And some Humboldt Fog. Cool. Which is a wonderful cheese that's going to go beautifully with this beer, which is Avery Wright Rascal, which is uh, uh, Adam Avery's interpretation of a Belgian wit style beer. Belgian wits, of course, as you know, are famous for having the infusion of coriander and orange peel in yeah, them. Yeah, this has coriander and orange peel. 5.6. Looks like a pretty standard Belgian wit beer, I guess. It may be a, a couple point, you know, six, you know, it might be a. Most wits usually go about five, so of course it's Adam Avery, so he's gonna bump it up. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. That smells good. Perfect refreshing beer for in the morning. Um, <clears throat> when I go to beer festivals, I like to start off the morning with a beer like this. Yeah, this is clean. Uh, Hugard and Avery, you know, Allagash Wit, whoever. Mm -hmm. um, sit there and drink it. You'll see a lot of the Brewers and whatnot do that in the morning. They'll start off with something nice and easy. It's almost like uh, drinking like a, what's that, with the champagne and orange juice. Oh, a mimosa. Thing. Yeah, it's got that same feel. It's really yeah. light and airy. Yeah, it's a perfect brunch beer. Good, very versatile along with the Hefeweizen and the Saison. Yeah. Um, normally, Siradahi, you can go Pilsner, a lot of different things, but definitely a wit will work too. Yeah. So uh, let's give this a shot. I've got my, I've, I'm, in the process of moving, so I'm packing, so I've got my cooking chopsticks with me. Those are no, I don't usually go this. Those are large. Yes, they are. <laughs> Have some wasabi if you want it. I'm just going to take it straight up, though. I don't know if I can cut that off right here. There we go. <laughs> Have it. Uh, I'll wait. That was great. 
Oh, that is good. That just melts. Just some sushi grade ahi peppered. Some people do sesame seeds. Some people put uh, soy sauce. Um, I just put a little sesame oil in the pan, a little black pepper on the sides, sear it all the way around. Get that beautiful, almost sashimi-ness still in the middle, but yet have yeah. this nice sear around the edges. The pepper really works well, like yeah. with like the coriander, I think, in this. Yeah, pepper's a great seasoning with it. And then the, the fish just works really beautifully too. I'm trying with a little bit of wasabi here. Woo. I didn't dilute that, so be aware. It's still good. I like it better without the wasabi. The okay. wasabi adds something to it that I don't necessarily like with the beer. But man, yeah. with this beer, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, I love it. I'm gonna have some more. If I can get it off here. You get the vibrancy of the of the fish, and yet you get still the orange plays beautifully in it. It's kind of like the reason why you have lemon with just go for it, John. Come on, get in there. I'm doing it. It's you get the vibrancy of the fish, but the orange plays into it just like you would put lemon on your or lime on your fish. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect marriage to having some acid to go with it. So in this case, you're using the beer almost as the acid, so it plays really well. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it goes with the chev. Oh, that is that is perfect. I got to remember that. Is this something you would want to eat the rind on? Uh, yeah, the rind's fine to eat on this. And the center is just a neutral ash, um, so it doesn't really have part any flavor. Mm. Vibrant goat cheese. Man, that is nice. Yeah, perfect with this beer. Wow. Wits I definitely love to have with the... Uh, you listening, Stephen? Triple Cream Breeze. They go fabulously with the Belgian Wit. Uh, German Hefeweizen. We still haven't had that episode where I'm going to pair five beers with a triple cream beer with you. But we have a German Hefeweizen, Belgian Wit, French Beer de Garde, Saison. Steve's over there. <laughs> yeah, he's over there. Sorry. I'm not talking to you guys. I'm talking to Steven. Because he did a show on uh, New Brew Thursday saying that uh, Brie doesn't really go with anything. And yeah. Little does he know. Well, this works really well with the, the fish and the, what was that again? Uh, uh, that's Humboldt Fog from Humboldt Cypress Fog. Grove. It's, it's a good. Northern California. It's a goat cheese. Creamery. Really good. And it's just delicious. This is a perfect pairing. Yeah. And it probably wasn't that expensive. I know this piece of ahi was, you know, right. sushi grade, a little you bit. said. Yeah. So, I mean, it's worth it. But you can get a smaller good. piece than that, too. I just got a big, big old wedge. Yeah. Um, but, no, I love, this is perfect with wit beers. Um, and a lot of things are. You can have uh, eggs with it, all kinds of stuff. But goat cheese, definitely a no-brainer. And uh, white fish or, or even fish like uh, this beautiful ahi go great with it. Cool. So it's definitely a winner. This is a great um, pairing. And I love this beer. So uh, thanks, John, for coming on. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Cheers. Cheers, Stephen. For me personally, because, uh, you know, starting my beer journey in Minnesota was kind of difficult because... We had nothing. <laughs> at, at the time. Yeah, I, I mean, there was just nothing there. And this was like 93, 94. And, there was uh, really nothing, nothing there. there. 93 yeah. sounds like a familiar date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started drinking beer and stopped wearing condoms. It's sort of the, <laughs> sort of what happened. Anyway. Um, That's a joke that nobody got except us, but it was yeah, hilarious. It's hilarious us. if you were here. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but so my friend and I, we'd always go and get like the English beers or the Belgian beers or whatever because they, they were always very plentiful. And so, you know, I got into the Flanders and Sours and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it was just, you know, like this this was kind of a staple for a long time. And it was really cool to kind of experience all that. And, and one of the things that we lose track of here in like American craft beer is that's like, I'm a craft beer drinker because I drink 18% stouts all the time. If it's not barrel aged, I don't want it in my mouth. And it's like, you know, this is really where beer started. You know, like the, the modern day version of what we see as beer now started from beers out of Belgium and England and whatever. And a lot of the brewers in the United States go over to Belgium and apprentice with these guys because they brew freaking amazing beer. Oh, yeah. Do that. Yeah, there were yeah there were like legendary so like you know trips that happened over there. I mean, you look at the one that you know bore um, Isabel Proximus, you mm -hmm. know, 
Um, this was a trip that it was uh, Vinci Alerzo, Tommy Arthur, um, Rob Todd, um, Sam Caligione, and um, uh, Adam Avery. And they all went over to Belgium. I remembered all of those. Win. Good job. Um, thank you. Um, Let's look that up later because I think he's just randomly naming brewers. Nope, that's, that's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it was random. But no, they all went to, to Belgium and they toured um, all of these different um, breweries, mainly like sour breweries, and they all came back together and they collaborated on Isabel Proximus, which was this epic, epic sour beer. And as accessible as this one is, that one is not accessible at yeah, that, all. Yeah, no, exactly. Not, not at all. But no, it just goes to show that... I, I mean, got to you know, smell an empty bottle yeah. once. <laughs> Although I wouldn't say it's, uh, out of, it's not out of scope or... It's 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 floating around. It out could there. happen on our show. Uh, yeah, we do have amazing. access to it. Yeah, we do, do have we access. Really? To it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we might do that one. Yeah. Okay, um, but no, it's like you said, like you was talking about. It's like you know, that's the kind of place that you know brewers go to learn more about their craft because, like you said, American craft beer is kind of you know, insular, where you know right. you have like guys in a certain locality who will kind of like bounce back and forth, and I mean that you know breeds a community, but it's good for guys to break out of their comfort zone and, you know, find places like that. Same yeah. thing when, people, when guys go to Germany. I just, I seriously encourage people to, you know, randomly pick a country and start drinking beers from that country for a while. And, you know, you don't have to give up drinking what you like to drink or whatever, but just include that into the mix for a little bit here and there. And um, that's one of the reasons I was really happy to see Untapped doing this because, you know, they have that, they have an outlet to kind of encourage people to drink something different because of the fact that you can get the badge or whatever. People will do anything for badges. Guilty. I drink, I, drink, um, I drink American Light Lagers for badges. No, don't do that. It's a badge. You get that badge, you're off the show. Oh. End of discussion. But, oh. Um, End I gotta, I gotta of discussion. Bump up my, I gotta bump up uh, my badge count, dude. Just okay, sorry. Down. Anyway, uh, so... Untapped any, drama. Un <laughs> <laughs> it really happens here. It's, it's it actually, happen. That's actually a little bit more sad than Twitter drama. <laughs> <laughs> no offense on tap. Yes, no, but anyway, um, I, I really, I like the fact that they're doing that because it kind of... It pushes it into the face of people like, hey, you know, if you want this badge, you got to go drink a Belgian beer. Yeah. And it, it forces them to introduce it inside. I wanted to take a show and be like, hey, try some Belgian beers. And I think next month we should do something from like Germany. Sure. You know, and, and just kind of move around a little bit and just kind of introduce. And we can kind of come back to Belgium and just, you know, I, I just think that's a good There's idea so, to kind of. There's so many foreign like imported beers that are so awesome yeah. that people just glance over because it's like, oh, it's, nah, whatever. It's always there. Yeah, I've I, said this before. You know, they, everyone's looking for the newest, greatest thing, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But you can find a really great beer that's been brewed for the last, you know, 50, 60, 100 years, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. and styles especially. I mean, like, there are certain styles that people, like, don't really explore as much as they deserve. A lot of times because, you know, they're, like, session beers or they aren't, like, you know, the really crazy in your face. I mean, you know, like, Munich Helles is the perfect example. Right. I mean, you can have some amazing Munich Helles lagers that no one really knows about. Anger makes an amazing Helles, but people Anger don't really- Anger makes good beer, period. Yeah, like, they really all do. All their beer is really freaking yeah, good. Definitely. Um, but it's the same thing where, you know, this th there's this just wonderful session beer, but, you know, a lot of, you know, beer geeks, quote unquote, don't really gravitate towards that because it's, I don't know, it's like, it's more simple and it's easier to drink, but it's still, you know, amazing. So, you know, break out of your comfort zone, for God's sakes. Ignore the hype for a little while and go drink something amazing. And if you would like to pair this beer, according to the back of the bottle, you can pair it with all grilled foods. So, <laughs> all grilled foods. You're good to go. <laughs> that's, that's, Which makes sense. You know, it's a very clean. Well, I could light. see this. Like, I could see doing like a grilled snapper with this. That would be mm. freaking amazing. There, 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 there are certain like bready notes um, that you get out of it that um, would work with all grilled foods. Apparently. Yeah. No. Because I mean, well, that's. <laughs> When you grill up meat and stuff like that, you add you add to that like starches and breads and whatever to kind of complement the meal, and this brings that in there with that bready quality that you're talking about. Yeah, I see this being like a cleansing and slightly complimentary beer. When I hear grilled foods, I hear, think of barbecue, mm -hmm. which that's you know a, right. that's a grill. What, yeah, what else is there that's grilled that's not barbecued, right? George um, Foreman. <laughs> that's what they were thinking. George Foreman himself is not grilled. <laughs> That's yeah. not what I've heard. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you actually, put him in that grill and it locks in the flavor. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> That's going to get it out. Oh, uh, God. No, but actually one thing about this beer especially that makes it so good with food is one thing Dr. Bill always talks about is the lifting effect of carbonation. Right. The scrubbing and bubbles. The scrubbing bubbles. Exactly. And all over. Exactly. And, but the thing is, is like especially Cezanne is... 
a very highly carbonated style, one of the most, really. And so, you know, you could you you could drink this beer with something that's really high in fat, and it would just strip all that fat off your tongue. Yeah, there's you know? a reason why it's in a, a cork and caged. Yeah, bottle, definitely. Because you know? it would blow a, a cap right off of it. Yeah, <laughs> These it's, are highly it's, carbonated. Yeah, it, it literally burns your tongue. Yeah, like the, the carbonation. It's it's a good burn. You know. Yeah, exactly. It's it's that that carbonic acid kind of. So we want to say congratulations to thirty years to Van Berg and DeWolf. That's awesome. Thank you for continuing to bring awesome Belgian beers into the country. We appreciate that because uh, aside from you flying us out to Belgium to drink beers, hint, hint, uh, we can't get them any other way. So thank you. Um, and thanks to uh, Untapped. The, the Brewery DuPont. Oh, yeah. For making for this great beer. Brasserie DuPont. Yeah. Yes, thank you. You it, guys are awesome. It should be noted that um, this is wintertime, so um, DuPont is putting out their Avec Les Bambous, which right. is their um, stronger winter version of this beer, which and is it's actually, absolutely amazing. Like, Bill doesn't do New Year's Eve with champagne. He does it with Abba Exactly. Keep which it warm. Is, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a wonderful beer in Tibisau. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So, as always, thank you for joining us, and until next week, stay safe and drink beer. Cheers. Cheers.